page 184. Yeah. Divine service setting 3, page 184 and following. Please rise for the first time.
this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 50. We shall speak it responsibly, whole verse by whole verse. Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. O Lord, I am the recognition of you, God, I am Our God comes. Does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heaven and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God shall have done it. 
the Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord is from 2 Kings chapter 5. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you not know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, that is Elisha, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And Elijah said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And they still went on and talked. Behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord in your forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Our epistle continues in the epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by an open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. The God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise. Oh. 
Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Today we are at the Feast of the Transfiguration. And Transfiguration Sunday is really the apex of Epiphany. And right after this, we start with the Lent season. Uh, and this is where the light which shone on the whole world now shines upon the disciples in true splendor. But Jesus see a new, Jesus is shown in a new color to the disciples. And we can call this Jesus white. It's not like this kind of white, but it is Jesus white. A white so white that no one on earth could bleach. So radiant, intensely white that they see Jesus transfigured with this new color. A transfiguration is stuck in the middle of St. Mark, almost like a writer's tool to give you a sneak peek into the future. And today's Gospel lesson, as was read a while ago, was, begins rather abruptly. It is written, and after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. The question is, Six days after what? If you read in the 8th chapter, the six days are the six days after Jesus told them about his suffering, death, and resurrection. Six days after the confession of St. Peter and also the rebuke he receives from the Lord for hindering his crucifixion. Now, Jesus taught them about the resurrection from the dead. And finally, towards the end of the 8th chapter, Jesus says, For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with the holy angels. So our Lord talks about his coming in glory, and he shows them the same glory, a glory so bright that he now have a new color. Remember that. Jesus white, a white so intense, so radiant that no one on this earth could bleach it. This trip to the Mount of Transfiguration was like a sneak peek into the future. Now this is an incident which aligns us through the true north, even Jesus, the North Star. Transfiguration Sunday reveals the glory that awaits where we are going, when we will all be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. And the Father's voice from heaven proclaims the importance of listening to Jesus as he reveals himself in the Word. I'm talking of maturing in our knowledge and application of Scripture, a knowledge of Christ, especially if we are going to deal with the problems and concerns of life that is sadly and painfully in the process of decay and collapse. Yes, collapse. For all things not joined to the true vine finally turn dry, fit to be burned. And now by the knowledge of Christ, I don't mean a head knowledge, but a confession of who Jesus is. It ends a lot of confusion and a lot of unnecessary worry. Our confession not only consists of repeating the creed, but it is a confession of our sins, a confession that acknowledges that Jesus is Lord, the only Lord in our life, that we have a heart without idolatrous thoughts, but thoughts about Jesus only. Let me elaborate. We all know where we are headed. We are our ultimate destination, don't we? It's eternal life. We are on that road marching towards glory, just like the glory Peter and James and John saw on the mountain, but it is not yet. The road we travel is the road that eventually leads to this eternal glory and eternal life with Jesus, dressed in impeccable white. However, the road and the manner in which we travel is important. It is more important than your university education, or your child's, your next vacation, your next big car, your early retirement, golden years of riding away into the sunset. All these are roads to human glory, which is by nature idolatrous. Any love 
that exceeds its bounds or replaces our love for God is idolatrous. So we need to keep this straight. The final glory of eternity requires that we first bear a cross. Jesus teaches this to the disciples, and these are no ordinary lessons. And as we read in the gospel, they are powerfully taught, taught through the life of Jesus, his bitter suffering, his innocent death, his resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again in the glory of the Father. Now Jesus returns to the glory and is seated at the right hand of the Father. But before all of that, he must bear a cross. A cross for the sins of the world. Before we see Jesus in his resplendent light again, we must see for the sake of our salvation the crimson red of his stripes. We must behold that. For his stripes heal our body, his body broken for our sins. The cross alone will bring us to a proper perspective of the transfiguration moment. For apart from the cross, the transfiguration by itself terrifies. Saint Mark, who recorded Apostle Peter's word, mentions that they were terrified. They do not know and understand this completely. St. Peter's idea about the three tents was not what God our Father had in mind. He reminds them that Jesus is the greater Moses. He is the greater Elijah, the beloved son to whom we must listen. While St. Peter is quietly putting together a building project, three tents, he says. At the first instance, it is the apostles' inability in understanding who Jesus is for God does not share his glory with another except his own son, who is the exact image of his father. However, there is another aspect that we must explore. When St. Peter wanted to build the shelters, he didn't want to leave this glory for that of the cross -bearer. The same reason that caused the blessed apostle to rebuke Jesus for talking about his death and for going to the cross. However, before the disciples and all of us see Jesus invite again, the Lord's journey has another mountain top, a mountain that ran red with his blood, bringing us salvation. As it were, the final battle, the blessed exchange, the life of the only righteous for the unrighteous, the sinless Jesus sacrificing himself for all sinful humanity. Before the glory, there is a cross for Jesus. And not only for our Lord, but all those who follow him. There is a cross, not glory as the world covets, but a cross. Not three tents as a memorial, but Jesus alone on the mountaintop of Calvary. And such is the way we have to follow. Take up your cross daily, he says, and he says that our lives have to be a crimson red before the white. Christian life, literally, is a bloodbath. Sometimes, figuratively, as you kill all your sinful uh, passions, and sometimes, in reality, in the blood of the martyrs that is even now being shed. But do not be disheartened by this battle. It is won. Jesus has overcome all, even our greatest tormentors, sin, devil, and the death. Listen to the beloved Son. The glory is coming, and the day when we will be gathered around the Lamb in His throne, multitude upon multitude, which no one could number, all of them wearing the same Jesus white, which has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And yet, before all this happens, our sinful nature only wishes glory, and it does not want to move from this glorious mountain top of transfiguration and journey to Calvary. The good news that Jesus proclaimed before his death has been confirmed beyond question by his resurrection from the dead, and his appearance to his friends on this feast day in this transformed, glorious humanity. Now, this was not a good news for a select few. For us, this was a good news 
that demanded to be shared for everyone. So a ragtag bunch of nobodies from the backwaters of Galilee, from the margins of what the imagined world thought itself to be civilized, set out to convert the world to faith in Jesus Christ. They faced ridicule. Some thought them drunks. They say, you're filled with new wine in Acts 2 at the day of Pentecost. Others dismiss them as babblers. And as St. Paul discovered on the Areopagus in Athens in Acts 17, still others thought them crazy. As when the Roman governor Festus exclaimed to St. Paul, your great learning is driving you mad. But they persevered. They sustained all kinds of things, from ridicule to the being thought of as man. They manifested a nobler, more compassionate way of life, a life of sacrifice of worldly pursuits. Even the love of their own life was taken over by their love for the gospel. Some died as martyrs, and even today, many are dying for the one and only true faith. And for such as these, God promises the crown, the glory that belongs to those, the multitude, dressed in white, who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Not any ordinary white, but Jesus' blood. The same message, our common apostolic Catholic faith is still in need of the people to proclaim it. That is our mission, and we are all missionaries of the the coming glory of God, but it is not yet. We are all missionaries who have been given the mandate, go and make disciples of all nations. And in apostolic time, the mission territory is not an exotic travel destination. It's everywhere. The mission territory is your kitchen table when you do your family devotions. It is the neighborhood when you go out doing groceries. It is the school when you go out and meet with your friends. It is the workplace. The mission extends to all aspects of our lives as citizens of this country, as consumers of goods. We have a particular obligation to be missionaries in our fast-turning pagan culture, a world which, like the Roman world of the past, proclaimed and thought that they were more civilized than us Christians they thought of us as backward. But through our service to God and our neighbors, as people who proclaim the Christ, the cross and the glory that is beyond the veil of death, for Christ himself, this is life. Now we always go back to the transfiguration and we see that Christ only manifested his glory in that one instance. Apart from the transfiguration, Jesus only comes in humility. Today, he comes bodily in the humble forms of bread and wine, only that you may be strengthened to look beyond your mindless pursuit of glory in this world. The next vacation, the next big investment, university education for your children and the like, so that you may look away from the instinctive nature that wishes to build three tents or more. Our need to have other gods, be gods ourselves, are seeking after other gods besides the true God. We always want the three tents, not the one. You see, we have a nature that is comfortable in having other gods besides Jesus. Like St. Peter, we like to stay on the mountain of glory without going to the mountain of suffering. The road that takes us to the valley of the shadow of death our own death and the death of our beloved. We are comfortable in having three tents instead of the only tent. The only temple we need is now manifest in the person of Jesus, the Son whom the Father glorifies by lifting up on the cross. The cross is his throne of grace and mercy and the grace continues till his coming again in glory. By grace we are forgiven our idolatry our nature which demands glory instead of the cross is led to repentance. Our repentance then puts us back on the path to eternal life. 
be not mistaken. In our journey, we will have troubles and distress, and yet our Lord has given us a preview of the coming glory. His comfort for us in this life is by His Word and His sacraments. Comfort from all things, especially heavily laden consciences and even our sins. Hear again the voice of the Father. This is my beloved Son, listen to Him. And Jesus promises us that He will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. He gives us His body and His blood that we may not be terrified of His glory that our sinful eyes cannot behold but common elements that remind us once again of the glory to come. Glory as of the only Son of the Father, glory as seen in the transfiguration. Listen to Him, our Father says, look to Him. Be not terrified, take Him into your mouth, that He may enter you to transform you, to transfigure you both within and without. May our Lord Himself come into us by his holy crimson red blood and transform us to the color of his glory in eternity give us clothes which shine like jesus in jesus holy name amen now may the peace of god that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in christ jesus
for the baptized that he would heed our heavenly Father's admonition to listen to his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, as he speaks to us through his holy word and sacrament, that he would, by grace through faith, behold him in his glory as he continues to tabernacle among us, delivering forgiveness, life, and salvation to the same. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who are called and ordained to serve in Christ's stead and by his command, that by their preaching and teaching would flow the right understanding that all Holy Scripture testifies of Christ and all that he has done and continues to do for our eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For parents in every Christian home, that they would pass on the faith to the children by word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have been placed in authority over us, that they would serve with integrity and honor, having the welfare of all in mind. For our country, the division, conflict, and strife would give way to unity, peace, and quietness. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Lord's flock here at risen Christ, Lutheran Church, that he would be granted faithfulness, humility, and patience in our various locations, striving to love God and neighbor in all that we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick, hospitalized, recovering, enduring ongoing treatment or suffering in any way, especially David, Colin, Lyndon, Hazard, David, Jordan, Jose, Jim, Claude, Jim, Ivan and Lucian, Nura, Julia, Nathan, Robert and Ellen, Marriage and Family, Elfie, Ashwin, Adam, Liz, Her, Judy, Pastor Joseph Devon, Annie, Bernard, Bless, Flynn, Joanna Bruce, Emma, Pastor Roger Wainer, Itana, Renata, Jack and Shirley, Pastor James Lou, and Roy, our chairman that they would know your peace and receive healing and relief according to your first your soul. That they will be comforted by the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who would come to the Holy Altar this day, to the Holy Communion of Christ through body and blood, that receiving the forgiveness of sins, they would be strengthened in faith toward you and in perfect love toward one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that he may be enabled constantly to serve you. To Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
service on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If I do receive more people who want to come, I'm happy to do two services as well. In case you don't want to come for the service, but want to come for the imposition of ashes, uh, I could do it during the day with uh, what we generally do for that is a corporate absolution and confession. Uh, whichever way works for you, let me know. If I have received for now just about three people who are interested in, in the midweek, apart from all of you who have said that they will come. But if I get two, uh, I'll, I'm happy to do two services during the midweeks. So Lenten devotions will continue uh, throughout uh, Lent, which begins after Ash Wednesday, Wednesdays 7 p.m. <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, I can see the announcements on this, but that's okay. Uh, we have a council meeting coming up, 23rd of February at 7 p.m. And then we have 7? 7.15 p.m. And then we have an elders meeting, uh, which will happen on the last Sunday of the month. Um, continue to pray for our shut-ins. I've been uh, receiving letters from them. Hilder, Renat, Hajat, and Shirley. They're doing well from what I heard last. Except for Hilda, I think Jack and Shirley and uh, Hilda got afraid. And one more person have already received their COVID shots. So hopefully they said that because the, right now they're quarantined because their retirement homes are. But they say that since they received the shots, they will start coming again to the church. So hopefully, uh, remember them, and if you do get time, do give them a call. They would be very happy to receive a call from you. Um, apart from that, what else? Yeah, that's about it. I guess it's Transfiguration Sunday. It is a feast day. A, one of the, not, well, it's one of the big feast days for us. I hope you enjoy and you have some nice pot roasts or something. Because Lent is, is beginning fattening yourself up, and then <laughs> I, 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 mean, I myself can't fast anymore, so, but if you would like to fast.